What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today has been a pretty crazy day. Not only is the Gambit 24 hour free trial live right now in Destiny 2, but Anthem just concluded a PAX panel in which they unveiled a ton of brand new Anthem information. And the best part is that they dropped a brand new Anthem gameplay trailer discussing the concept of Our World, My Story. Now that tagline, Our World, My Story, is used to describe kind of what game Anthem is because it is a multiplayer game, a shared world experience, and that's what they've been touting for a very long time. But of course, it's also a Bioware game, and Bioware games are always known for their solid story. But how can you achieve both? You generally don't have large-scale shared multiplayer games with fantastic storytelling that involve choice and so on, because if you're in a group with a bunch of friends, who decides what choice you make? And will that choice impact all the party members? Can you vote on what choice to make? Like you run into a ton of problems. Anthem is trying to solve this by having most of the world and the action take place as a multiplayer experience and then you go back to Fort Tarsus, somewhat of an anti-social space where you can talk to and develop characters and so on. But let's let Bioware explain it with their brand new trailer. At the heart of Anthem is the concept of our world, my story. The unique combination of a dynamic, ever-changing world and a powerful personal story. In our world, you band together with friends for epic adventures across a vast, shared landscape teeming with danger. The world narrative advances for your whole team. Together, you'll confront countless enemies, those who threaten to take control of the Anthem, as well as ancient beasts. And you'll get further into our world by taking on explosive missions offered by agents who need your help. These missions take you deep into the heart of Anthem, while also developing the personal stories of each agent. Trust me, I'm a person you want to know. Outside of the battles, there's free play, a chance for you to explore solo or with friends, uncover answers to your questions about Anthem, and find powerful artifacts that could lead you to victory down the road. Back within the safety of Fort Tarsus is where my story begins. This is your chance to develop a richly personal narrative where your choices have consequences. In this bustling trader town, you'll develop bonds with your pit crew who can help you prepare for future battles. They're the people in the world who have your back. And as your relationships develop, you'll learn about their pasts and the future they hope to see. Fort Tarsus is ripe for exploration as well. You may even encounter shadowy figures with questionable character. It all depends on the decisions you make. This is real-time storytelling, a reinvention of personal narrative in a multiplayer game. As a freelancer, you are the bridge between the heroic adventures discovered in our world and the personal journey that unravels in my story. And ultimately, the key to the fate of everyone. And so, there you have it. And I've just gotta say, I am constantly surprised by just how gorgeous this game is. Please actually launch looking somewhat like this anthem. So, let's talk about some of the information revealed in that trailer. I'm not gonna just reiterate what was said in the trailer, but some of the little things you may have missed include, firstly, we actually got some gameplay with the Storm, of course, and the Interceptor. The Interceptor, kind of for the first time, we saw something from its perspective. And we see it run, jump, and it looks like it dodges or boosts forward and then slams the ground for what appears to be an area of effect melee attack. But of course, no proper melee attack is complete without a 360 spin in the air before you slam down. So definitely, you know, does, this is a short piece of gameplay, but it does appear to indicate, like we've speculated, a very mobile class and potentially even a melee focused class. But of course, we're gonna have to wait and see more. 
Now as for the storm, we actually get a quick piece of gameplay showcasing that instead of sprinting, it appears that the storm will start to float in the air like along the ground, which I don't know if that does anything, but that is cool as can be. We get a little bit more from the storm's perspective when it's flying through the air here and then just looting a chest standing still, but then we actually see it utilize an attack. First off, we actually see the storm calling in a lightning strike on this enemy they're fighting. We saw a third person perspective of that before, but here it is again in much better clarity and something very exciting that people were not able to see unless they were at the E3 demo and they specifically did this and this time we get a first person perspective is that we see the storm shooting these seeking icicles out of its hands and this is really indicative of a class that's mastered the elements. We see it using ice, we see it using lightning, and likely these are going to prime those combos that we do see pop up within Anthem gameplay. You freeze someone with the icicles, or you electrocute them, of course, with the lightning strike, and then another javelin comes in. For example, a colossus shoots his mortar pod. That's going to trigger a combo with those status-affected enemies. So I believe that the storm is really going to act as the combo primer class. It's going to be that class that you want to have in your party in order to optimize your damage output to just make everything trigger combos, I think. Now, moving on from there, something that was showcased within the trailer but discussed in much better detail during the panel was the introduction of agents. Now, agents in Anthem are going to be characters that you interact with and according to Bioware, they're going to be the main source of your missions. And I think these are a little bit outside of the campaign. So in terms of side quests and all of that stuff, it's interacting with these agents in which you get those uh, side quests. Now, these agents are not just going to be random vendors like you have in Destiny, where they just stand still and you go to them, turn in some stuff, get some rewards, and that's it. You're actually going to be able to interact with them. And you are going to be able to make choices when you interact with them. They did show off some screens of this happening where you could have uh, you know, a right option or a left option and go either path with these agents and the actual things you talk about and the choices you make will impact your relationship with that agent. So potentially you could really please them and they're gonna keep giving you quests and, and even special quests and so on or you are a complete jerk to them and then they have nothing to do with you. You might even miss out on certain quests if you do do that. During the panel, Bioware also talked about contracts. Now, contracts are things that you can do with agents kind of as end game or slight end game activities. Once you've done pretty much all the missions for a certain agent, you can enter into contracts with them. And Bioware even described this as story mode light. So they're potentially going to give you a lot of information and even somewhat end game rewards for turning an agent into a contract situation by developing that agent, interacting with him, making the right choices, and then again going into that contract mode when you start to do that for him, which is really sweet. It's essentially like developing a faction, leveling up a faction in other games. Now, speaking of factions, let's talk about enemy factions because Bioware actually went over all of them. So there's going to be four enemy factions within Anthem. Firstly, there are the Scars. Now we didn't really know too much about Scars, but Bioware said they're actually almost insectoid and they're trying to emulate humans. They kind of look up to humans or they're jealous of humans or something. They're not super intelligent and they're more similar to just slightly more advanced wildlife, but that's what they are. They're these human-like creatures, but they're still technically creatures. In addition to that, there's going to be the Dominion. This is the other humanoid faction, not humanoid, actual human faction that's up to the north. They are in direct competition and direct conflict with your human settlement. Uh, just like, you know, two countries would be at war somewhat. You have these two enemy factions with you, the Freelancers, and the Dominion trying to control the Anthem of Creation, kind of the main goal for Anthem. In addition to that, you have Outlaws. Now, these are just bandits and just generally bad people, criminals that roam the world. And also, lastly, you have the wildlife, all the alien creatures and beings existing on Anthem's world. Now, moving on from there, something absolutely awesome I was able to catch during the panel is that during a question, Bioware was describing your abilities within Anthem, how you customize gameplays uh, towards your playstyle. 
and they talked about the Colossus and they said, you know, you can have a gear piece that will uh, give the enemies aggro onto you and also you can have a mortar and a flamethrower. So they literally mentioned three different gear pieces. Now previously, all we knew about was two for sure ability gear pieces on each of your different javelins. So for example, going into this before, we knew the Colossus had access to a, a mortar pod and also something like a flamethrower and I think we've seen a rail gun as well. But now you can potentially have a third gear piece and this is presumably lootable as well. For the Colossus, it will actually make enemies aggro onto you. At least that's what Bioware was saying. So will all the different javelins have this third previously unknown gear piece what kind of gear will it offer what kind of abilities will it have i don't know but that's absolutely sweet and that increases the customization even more we went from two abilities to three right so that is really really sweet and moving on from there the last piece of information we're going to talk about today is the date for the demo so bioware said that the demo for anthem is arriving February 1st, 2019. And unfortunately, that is quite a long ways away. You know, the game launches February 22nd. However, and there's a big however, while they said this, they actually did really clarify that this was the launch date for the demo. And they actually said that there are tests and other things coming well before then. So potentially that's like an actual literal demo, like back in the old days, whereas there's going to be potentially an alpha and a beta much earlier in the year. So we don't know the dates for those earlier things, but demo February 1st is what we do know. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Anthem content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.